What's up, peeps? Nick Battle, a.k.a. Nino's Corner, man. First off, if you like this content that is coming to you, man, go hit that subscribe button here on YouTube. Go hit the bell so you can get all the notifications. Go like and comment on all the videos. It means a lot. And if you're listening to this on the podcast, man, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, Breaker, the whole nine, go give me a like, a comment, a review. Helps me grow this channel immensely. You guys have been rocking with me since day one. But today, guys... A lot of people been asking me on Twitter and on social media, where's Nino's commentary? Where's Nino's thoughts on the late breaking news they hit yesterday that Texas and OU have been contacting the SEC for for uh, the possibility to join the SEC and leave the Big 12. So, guys, we have gotten news today that it looks like Texas and OU are both not going to re-up their contracts with the Big 12 here in 2025. So these talks are very real. And what does that mean for Texas? What does that mean for OU? My personal thoughts, man, just my personal thoughts, Nino's thoughts are, you know, a lot of folks that are in the Big 12 really didn't want to go into the SEC to play the SEC game. Anybody that knows college football knows what I mean by SEC game. And it's the game that's not played on the field. Um, but with the NIL opening up, guys, it makes things that you thought uh, were illegal. Now these things are basically legal uh kids can have the opportunity to have endorsements kids can get paid for their likeness their name image and likeness this opens up the door for schools like texas schools like oklahoma um don't be fooled if you don't if, if you start to see schools like ohio state and other schools start to make power conferences just like this if 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 this deal does go through to add texas and ou to the sec Name, image, and likeness is a huge thing with this. So you pair the best conference in college football, which is the SEC. Uh, you pair that with two of the best brands in college football in Texas and Oklahoma. And you have a match made in heaven when it comes to football gods. I mean, just think about this. Because you imagine Texas having their rivals back. We already play OU every year. That is one of the biggest rivalries in the country. Now you bring in Texas versus Texas A&M again. The game should have never ended. Even when Texas A&M went to the SEC 10 years ago, that game should have stayed and Texas played Texas A&M every year, just like Clemson and South Carolina play and a couple of the other Florida schools play each other every year, regardless of conference. That should have always happened. Now you look at Texas versus Arkansas, another rivalry that was bred in the Southwest Conference days. And now if this happens, if Texas and OU ends up going to the SEC, you're going to get to see the Texas versus Arkansas rivalry again. You're going to see the Texas versus Texas A&M rivalry again. Of course, you're going to continue to see Texas versus OU, okay? OU versus Texas A&M. You're going to see some great football. And you're also going to see, we saw what Texas did against LSU just a couple years ago, how exciting that game was. Okay, we saw what Texas did to Georgia a couple years ago, how exciting that game was. Now we're going to see in 2022 what Texas is going to do with Alabama and teams like that of that ilk and that nature. But now if Texas and OU do join the SEC, we're going to concede it on, the, on a consistent basis. Uh, could you imagine a season of Texas, uh, Alabama, Georgia, Auburn, Texas A&M, OU, um, I mean, God, Lee, you name it, LSU, Arkansas, Ole Miss, Mississippi. I mean, just the endless amount of matchups that, that are going to come from this is just going to be utterly amazing. What kind of ramifications does this have, not only for Texas, not only for OU, but for the other schools that are in this equation? Let's look at Texas A&M. We all know why Texas A&M left the Big 12 10 years ago. For one, it was Texas getting the Longhorn Network, right? And so with, with the Big 12 not having the Big 12 Network, Texas getting their own Longhorn Network, uh, A&M left for the SEC. They saw greener pastures, or what they thought were greener pastures, and which we'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, they ended up going to the SEC the West, and they continuously finished fourth, maybe fifth, in the SEC West on an average in, in this 10-year frame. Now, if you start to look at things, if you start to look at if a and I believe if a and would have stayed in the Big 12 uh, prior to them leaving to go to the SEC, a and could have ran the Big 12 with Johnny Football for three or four years. I mean, they could have ran and ran with that momentum and been a top team in this conference, the criminal crop of this conference. However, they left to go to the SEC. 
and you see how things have, have have shaken out for them since they've been there not not competing for sec championships and things of that nature however one thing that a m does have to sell to recruits is that they are the only texas team in the sec in the southeastern conference if this move happens and Texas does go to the SEC, that is one card that Texas A&M cannot use to recruit. That is one card that they can't pull out their back pocket and say that we played in the best conference and the other team down the street that has all the history in the state uh, that goes by the name of UT, uh, they don't have that. They don't play against the best talent. Uh, they're, not, they're not in the conference that sends the most players to the NFL. They're not this. They're not that. If Texas goes there, they immediately trump Texas A&M. Immediately. They become uh, the Texas A&M that was the Texas A&M that was always second fiddle to a Texas team in the Big 12. It was what it was. Um, and it's not a, a knock on Texas A&M. It's just a simple fact that Texas A&M does not want Texas or OU to come to the Big um, to come to the SEC. They want them to stay in the Big 12. They want them to stay in the Big 12 because they have the bragging rights of being in the SEC. If this happens, if Texas and OU end up coming, man, this is going to upset not only guys like Texas A&M. This is going to upset a team like Missouri, who also left from the Big 12 to go to the SEC. Now, how does this impact as far as Texas getting into the SEC, Texas and OU getting into the SEC? It impacts because, if not mistaken, uh, the SEC needs three teams three teams to say nay when it comes to voting to add these teams to the conference. Now, if Texas A&M Texas and Missouri say no, who's going to be the third team? Which, honestly, I don't see this happening because Texas and OU are two blue blood programs with worldwide brands that can bring not only uh, the history, the rich history of both these programs, but what they will also bring is... Money, 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 money. Okay. And if you guys can't see me because you're listening to me in the podcast, I'm kind of doing the Johnny football money symbols. You guys on YouTube can see me, but it brings money. So the reports that are coming out now is that if Texas and OU do join the SEC, the team revenue split share for these SEC teams is upwards of $38 million per team each year. That's a lot of money. Money talks, and you guys know what BS walks. So Texas and OU, the possibility of going to the SEC, this is something that I think is necessary. Necessary for both teams to have the opportunity to come. I think this is something that could definitely benefit and, and, and help both teams. Now, on the recruiting landscape, kids that want to play in Texas and they want to go to UT and not a knock on A&M per se or anything, but we all know the state school at Texas is the University of Texas. Kids can go and they can go be like Evan Young. Kids can go. Now, you're seeing what with the NIL and things of that nature, these deals that guys like B. John Robertson are starting to get with their deals, the Raising Cane deals and other endorsement deals. You're going to start to see that. If Texas goes to the SEC, you're going to see those deals ramped up because it'll be in the best conference in college football along with being the richest college football program, no matter of record, Texas is always the richest or top two or three, regardless of record. They bring a lot of money to the program. This team just won the Director's Cup, meaning they're the, the best sports school in the country. And it, it brings a lot to these high school players. They get to play in the state of Texas, in their home state, at the flagship school in the state. Um, and... They get to play against the best in the SEC if this happens. So it's a lot to think about, guys, a, a lot to think about. I'm very intrigued on this. I think this is going to be a good move if Texas happens to go and OU happens to go to the SEC. I think it's a great move. You got blue blood programs all over the place. You, this would be a conference that is going to have uh, upwards of three, maybe four blue blood programs with the additions you have in Texas, OU, and Alabama are for sure blue blood programs in in this in this college football you can argue a couple of the teams in the sec are blue blood programs as well um so you know like with the floridas the lsu's the georgia's i mean we we have we have the opportunity for this to be uh a talent rich uh, uh 
conference. And it, and it, it already is, but to, it's going to enhance this talent richness in this conference. Regardless of what Texas has done in the field, Texas has always recruited very well. And people understand that, that Texas has finished continuously in the top five range, top 10 range in recruiting over the past, I don't know, uh, seven, eight years. They've always did well in recruiting. That hasn't been a problem. It's been the coaching. And so you, you couple the recruiting, um, you couple the machine of having the SEC behind your name, and then you couple the fact that we're getting one of the best and brightest offensive minds in the game, and Steve Sarkeesian and his A-plus staff that he has hired, and you have an opportunity for a team like Texas to do great things in the best conference in college football. I'm very intrigued by it. Now, how does, how does this fallout um, help or hinder other teams in the Big 12 Conference? Well, we know. I think the only team that is not going to have a problem with getting in any other conference is going to be Kansas. Not not because of the of, of the football, but because we all know that Kansas is a blue blood basketball program. Their basketball program brings a lot of money to the table. Uh, so Kansas have their pick of the litter. They can go to the Big Ten and go to the Pac-12. They can go to the ACC. They can do whatever they want just alone for the basketball program. The other teams in the Big 12, when you start to look at Oklahoma State, Iowa State, Baylor, TCU, um, uh, I can't even think of the other teams right now. I mean, but that, you know, that that just that just kind of shows you, oh, Texas Tech, you know, that just kind of shows you that these teams are going to have a hard time. Uh, they might pick up another conferences, but it, uh, them not being attached to Texas and Oklahoma uh, is going to hurt. The, everybody knows the Big 12 has been held up by, has been, propped up by Texas and Oklahoma. Oklahoma's done all the winning. We got to give them their their flowers right here. Oklahoma's done all the winning. Texas is the ones that bring in the money. And I think we all understand that. So uh, it's going to be very interesting, guys, to see what happens here. I am excited to see if Texas and OU do go to the SEC to see these rivalries. We're starting to see what Chris Conti and his team, uh, uh, they are no kidding about sports. They are about sports. We understand that Texas is a great academic institution. However, we also do understand that Texas is a great football and sports, a football blue blood program and a great sports program as a whole when it comes to swimming and diving, when it comes to uh, uh, baseball, when it comes to basketball, when it comes to track and field, Texas has it all. And so we can be a team, uh, we can be a school that is one of the best academic institutions in the country. It's always ranked in, in the country as one of the best public institutions. Uh, a lot of people call it a public ivy. Um, and then you have a, a school that has the opportunity to be the best, if not one of the best athletic schools in the country, evident by them winning the Director's Cup. Now we get the football team rolling and, and, and things of that nature. And I think this would be off to the races. So you guys let me know what you think about Texas and OU. What do you think about it? I think it's going to be a match made in heaven if they go to the SEC. I think the recruiting is really going to pick up. I think, uh, and the recruiting's already good, but it's really going to be even better. It's going to be enhanced. I think teams like Texas A&M cannot use that calling card um, that they're the only team in the SEC. It, it, it ends up hurting them. It makes them basically what they were when they were in the Big 12. And it allows, it's not just Texas and OU benefiting from this. The SEC as a whole is going to benefit because now, they have a complete stronghold on the Texas area, the, the Houston area, the Dallas area, um, the Central Texas and West Texas area. They, they will really have a stronghold on these areas now because they'll have three teams, two of them in Texas, one of them in Oklahoma, and you can go recruit the best of the best out of that state and know that they're going to come and play in the SEC in the Southeastern Conference. So, if this does happen, a few things that I am going to have some grief. You won't hear me chant the SEC, SEC, SEC. I'm a Texas guy. I graduated from Texas. I didn't graduate from the SEC. Uh, just a little joke, a little joke. My wife's from Alabama. She screams SEC, SEC, SEC all the time, no matter who's playing, even though she's an Alabama fan. I think it's weird. Um, and I'm going to always be a Longhorn, whether they're in Big 12 or the SEC. But I think this is going to be a match made in heaven, guys, if this does happen. I'm ready to see what happens with this. Looks like Texas and OU are going to decline their options to extend their contracts with the Big 12 uh, past 2025. Uh, we looked, uh, hopefully, to see movement on this sooner than 2025, possibly 2023. Could that be something? Uh, that could be something. Could you imagine seeing 
Texas and Texas A&M play on Thanksgiving Day in the next couple of years. It'll be amazing. Uh, so if you're a true fan of football, if you're a true fan of sports and rivalries, to understand that Texas has the potential to play Texas A&M again on Thanksgiving is something that is going to be amazing. It's something that we've been yearning for. Um, I've already seen some of my friends have been texting me that went to Texas A&M, you know, that, hey, you guys are, are going to crap the bed here if you guys come here. That's I miss it. I miss talking junk to my to my friends that went to A&M. I do. I miss uh, uh, them talking junk to me also if Texas A&M beats Texas one year and then if we beat them the next year. I miss having that dialogue and that conversation. Now, if Texas and OU do join the SEC, we can rekindle some of those rivalries, have some fun, lighthearted football talk and sports talk, and, and just restore Texas versus Arkansas. Restore Texas versus Texas A&M. Um, add the addition of great games like Texas versus Bama, Texas versus LSU, you know, Texas versus Florida, Texas versus Georgia, and always keep the Red River rivalry in Texas versus OU. Split down the middle, baby. One half burnt orange, one half whatever color Oklahoma wears, that, that red color. Just a little joke to my OU fans, man. To my OU folks, man, I got a lot, a lot of folks who went to OU that are really good friends of mine. But on that note, man, let me know what you think in these comments, folks, on Texas and OU potentially going to the SEC. And leave me a comment. Drop a note. But like I always end these podcasts, guys, going to let you guys know this, man. Do you? D-O-U. Don't be afraid to fail. Outgrow your environment. Understand your brilliance. And on that note, Nino's Corner, I'm out. Salute to you guys. Peace.